Today we're going to show you in detail how to install the AK-20 pump in a common residential water well. The AK-20 is our most popular pump and will deliver 5 to 6 gallons per minute. This well has a static water level of 11 feet. So the AK-20 is the ideal pump for this well as it will reach down 23 feet. Static plus 10 is the installation depth that we normally recommend. Now we have a separate video that talks about static water level. Please make sure you watch this if you do not know what your static water level in your well is. This is a super important concept. Let's get going. When you're done installing the AK pump, it's going to look like this. It can deliver anywhere between 3 and 6 gallons per minute of clean well water when you need it the most. Let's demonstrate that right now. We have a 1 gallon milk jug. We've got some blue food coloring in there for visibility. This video is a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to get this done. It's a bit slower paced than our other videos so we can capture the details. Now we also have a PDF format that you can download from our website if this is a better format for you. We also have a separate fast motion video that shows the whole process in two minutes. The shorter video answers the question, can I do it? This video you're watching answers the question, how to do it? It's unavoidable while doing any kind of work in a well to not stir up and make the water cloudy. This is caused by dislodging rust on the inner surface of the well casing and knocking it into the water. This is harmless. This rust is in your water right now. But older wells can have quite a bit of rust. A big surge of this grit can clog the little screens on your faucet, dishwashers, and washing machines. An annoyance we want to skip if we can. With newer or PVC line wells, this may not be an issue at all. If you have a filter on your incoming water line like this, then the filter will trap this grit. Problem solved. If you think this might be an issue, then the best thing to do is flush your well by running a yard hydrant or hose bib for several hours after the installation is complete. When you start the installation, if you turn off the well power when the pressure tank is full, then almost no gritty water will enter your house when you flush your well. The way to do this is to turn off everything in your house that uses water. Then open a faucet in the house until you hear the well kick on. Then turn the faucet off then turn off the well power when you hear the well turn off. Try to keep household uses of water at this time to an absolute bare minimum. First step is to turn off the power to your well. You should have a breaker that's labeled well. It could either be a single or a double pole breaker. Next, remove the well cap. Well caps come in a variety of designs, but it should be fairly simple to remove the cap. In this case, all it is is a loosening these bolts and the cap comes right off. Carefully pull the wires out of the casing. This is what you see when you look down the well. You can see the uh, water surface reflecting there, the wire going down to the submersible pump, and then the pitless adapter that goes through the side of the casing of the well pump. Our pumps are designed to slip past this pitless adapter. This is actually a fairly small one, but all our pumps are designed to fit past these pitless adapters. Note that the parts have labels on them, identifying their names as reference in the PDF instructions in this video. These are special labels that are designed to be removable. So remove them prior to installing the part into the well. Examine the bottom of the pump. This is the intake and is the bottommost part of the system. Check for a shipping plug in this hole and remove. You should be able to see a stainless steel ball on the inside. Note that the intake has 3 quarter inch female pipe threads. These threads are primarily used for a test fixture that we use for our pre-ship quality checks. In the case where our pumps are used in a sandpoint well, where grit could possibly enter the pump mechanism, we screw on an intake screen that filters out everything larger than 7 thousandths of an inch. This is not an issue with 99% of our installation, so this expensive part is not included. At this time the pump is functional. To better visualize how the system works, we invite you to test your pump at this time. Loosely spin on the T-handle to that threaded rod at the top of the wellhead. Then dry fit the spigot into this T-fitting. Now place the bottom of the pump into a 5 gallon bucket of water and tilt it slightly. This system does not suck water from the top, it pumps from the bottom. It's a much superior system. 
To complete our understanding of the installation process, what we're going to do when we install is we're going to extend the distance between the well head, which is everything blue above my hand, and that's above the well cap, and the pump, which is the bottom of the system, and that's everything gray and black. That's the very bottom of the system that's in the water. We can extend the distance between the well head and the pump by as much as 50 feet, depending on your well. Today we're going to extend it 20 feet by adding stainless steel pump rods and drop pipe between these two. We want to extend this distance so the pump can reach the water in your well and about another 10 feet below the top of that water. Please note that these pump rods are 100% stainless steel along with the hardware on them. They are manufactured to an exact length and exactly match the length of our drop pipe sections taking into account thread engagement. We do not recommend trying to make extra sections by yourself. Stainless steel is expensive and is difficult to thread properly. Extra rod and pipe extensions can be purchased and are cheaper than you can make them yourself. The wellhead is shipped attached to the pump to protect the exposed piston rod during shipping. Remove the nut at the top of the wellhead. Do not lose this nut and unscrew the wellhead. and remove. Now replace the nut on top of the piston rod. Attach the first pump rod to the piston rod coming out of the pump. Be careful not to cross thread the rods. Thread the rod all the way into the coupling nut until rod hits rod inside that coupling nut. Then spin the jam nut up to the coupling nut then tighten that jam nut against the coupling nut using two 7 16 wrenches. There is no rotational stress on the rod, so snug is all that's needed, not superman tight. Note that the coupling nuts and the jam nut on the pump rod are pre-jammed. Slip a white drop pipe section over the pump rod and thread it onto the pump. Hand tighten and do not cross thread. Tighten with two channel lock pliers. It's actually advantageous for the pipe joints to leak slightly, so we do not recommend putting pipe dope or Teflon tape on the threads. Superman tight is also not needed. Carefully and slowly unwind the safety rope. Rule number one when working around wells is do not drop anything into the well. It's gone forever. Famous last words are, I won't do that. Your electric pump should have a safety rope also. Now dropping the pump into the well during assembly is bad. Do not do this. Attach the safety rope to the bottom of the pump to keep this from being a disaster. Keep kids and dogs away from the installation area as they are the primary destroyer of things. To attach the safety rope to the eyelet at the bottom of the pump, any loop knot that will not slip such as a bowline will work for this step. My personal favorite is a retraced overhand knot. However, it is our experience that people's knowledge of knots is truly abysmal, so let's not use a knot at all. Here's a trick I learned from a retired Navy diver. Pull about 24 inches through that eyelet and then twist the rope open and pull about a foot through there. Go up about another four inches or so and repeat that step. And then that's enough to hold it in place but one last uh, insertion there for good measure and you have a bomb proof uh, attachment of the pump to the safety rope. The pump is ready to install into the well. Place the wonder block, your channel lock pliers, and a towel by the well and put the two 7 16 wrenches in your back pocket. Carefully lower the pump into the well. Try and get past that pitless adapter if your well has one. Catch that threaded adapter with the wonder block. Note that the notch of the wonder block is towards the casing. Place the towel over the open well to keep tools from falling into the well. We recommend a second person just hold everything in place while the assembler gets ready for the next step. Now we're going to remove this towel just so you can see things better. The next step is to thread the second pump rod onto the first. Be careful again not to cross thread the 
the rods. Again, rod touches rod inside that coupling nut. Spin the jam nut up to that coupling nut. And tighten with two 17, 7 7/16 wrenches, just like before. Slip the next white drop pipe over the pump rod. Do not bend the rod to accomplish this. For people who are vertically challenged, a short step ladder or chair is recommended. Hand tighten these pipes together. Again, making sure you're not cross-threading them. And then use your channel locks to snug them up. Again, not Superman tight. Then you can drop it another five feet into the well. Carefully controlling its descent. The uppermost drop pipe must be this blue pipe. Note that the male threaded adapter is machined so it can slip into the well head. This is the only pipe that's going to be able to do that. In northern areas where freezing may be an issue, drill a 1 16th inch hole just above the female threaded adapter. You want to drill this hole right above the lip of this adapter. So there's no chance of that hole being blocked by the casing. Find a spot on the casing where the pump is the most vertical. In many cases this is not an issue at all. And for most people the opposite side of the pitless adapter is the natural location. Right there works. We are now going to clamp the uppermost drop pipe to the well casing using the included U-bolt. 10 or 12 inches below the top of the casing is the normal point for this U-bolt. If you want to go stealth mode and hide your pump inside the casing when it's not in use, please view our stealth video as this U-bolt placement is much lower. Use the base plate to mark the location of these holes. Visually align it with the, the drop pipe. and use a sharpie to mark those holes. And then a center punch. To get a really good starting point for our drill. And before you start drilling these holes, move the pipe out of the way so you don't drill into the pipe. Then we're going to use a brand new 5 16 drill bit to drill those two holes. You'll note that the shavings are falling outside of the well. Test fit the U-bolt. It's a little tight, so we're going to kind of... Wobble that drill bit from left to right. You can also expand or contract the legs. There we go, that's what we want. Now center of the pipe, between those two holes, and install the U-bolt from the inside. The most likely mistake is to drop the U-bolt at this time. So be extremely careful. Do not let go of that U-bolt until you have a nut on the outside. Now before you put the final tight on that U-bolt, you want to lift the, the drop pipe up about six inches or so. This is going to make a later step a lot easier. Now 
The U-bolt will hold the pump rock solid. The wonder block is no longer needed. Drill an additional hole in the casing, about six inches or so down. This is where your eye bolt is going to be, and that's going to be the final anchor point, or the upper anchor point for our safety rope. The next step is to cut the safety rope. Now you want to have about four or five feet outside of the, the well casing and you want to uh, hold on to the side of the rope that goes into the well casing because as you cut it, the weight of that rope can pull that rope into the well casing. You want to cut it with a lighter so the ends do not fray. Tie off the safety rope using that retraced overhand knot like before. and put the safety rope and the wires back inside the well casing. Drilling the well cap can be a bit tricky. Carefully calculate the distance from the edge of the well cap to the center of the pipe. Please note that we are centering the pipe, not the adapter. The pipe is one inch in diameter. The casing is a quarter inch and the thickness of the cap can vary from tap to tap, but in this case it's about a quarter of an inch thick. So we're looking at one inch, but that's going to vary from cap to cap. If in doubt, fudge it slightly towards the center of the cap, but not more than like a sixteenth or so. Now we're going to carefully line up the conduit uh, part of the cap with the conduit. And we're going to get a location for that pipe. Then we're going to transfer that measurement to the cap. And center punch a starting hole. So we're going to use this inch and a half hole saw to cut a hole in that cap where we have marked it. Now this is a cast iron a well cap. Uh, they were used a lot in the old times. A lot of the modern well caps are aluminum or plastic. Uh, a lot of people ask, can it go through this steel? Yeah, it can go through, no problem. Piece of cake. Okay, reinstall the cap. Make sure your electric wire has got a nice clean uh, bend there. Then replace the cap over the blue drop pipe and retighten the bolts. Now, if your hole is off uh, rotationally, you can kind of tap that well cap around to get your alignment. In this case, we're dead on. I mean, I've done this dozens of times. If you're off a little bit this way, the flex in that pipe, because we had that U-bolt down 10 inches, can usually absorb any kind of air there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to trim about a third of this lower lip of this grommet uh, so we can seal this hole. You'll notice that the casing is right up against, uh, is visible in this hole here, so we have to cut the uh, lower lip because that casing is going to interfere with the lower lip. And we're going to wet it so it uh, lubricates it a little bit. And then we're going to work it off over the drop pipe. If it turns inside out, don't sweat it. Now that cut part we want to line up uh, with the well casing. Now using a flat bladed screwdriver, you can usually work that lower edge in you can kind of push the pipe to one side as you work it in. Takes a little bit of work, but it can be done. Uh, worst case scenario, you can trim the entire lower lip off the grommet 
and uh, that's kind of a last resort but that'll work also it's not super critical but we want a nice tight seal around that uh, drop pipe to keep all bugs and that kind of stuff out of the well screwing on the well has the next step you want to remove that nut from the uppermost pump rod keep this very handy then you want to lift this rod up so there's about 16 inches exposed or so then you want to carefully thread that wellhead onto the pump rod. Now there's a baffle inside the wellhead that's going to be sometimes difficult to get through, but there's a little quarter inch hole inside that baffle, and you want to thread it through that hole. Hand tight is about all you need, and then replace that jam nut onto that pump rod and you're ready for the next step. Now you want to dry fit the spigot into that T-fitting. Uh, in many cases we never glue this. Uh, some people will elect to glue it but uh, there's some advantages later on uh, uh, to never gluing this. And Then you want to spin on the T-handle and then jam the jam nuts just like on a pump rod. Adjust the pump up or down so the T-handle is at a comfortable height for pumping. Normally this is at fingertip level when standing up straight and your hands hang down. So we have to drop this just a few inches. You do that by lo loosening the U-bolt and then kind of working that drop pipe down. And then we can aim the spigot to wherever the bucket's going to be. In this case, it's going to be there. And then retighten that U bolt. Now, this is where you want it snug. In our AK series, there's very little weight on the U bolt, so it's not that big of a deal. But you can tighten it pretty well. Uh, you're not going to crush that pipe. And we're ready to go. Now you want to pump water using a firm short upstroke and a quick downstroke. Now there's no water in the drop pipe so it will take a few strokes for the water to reach the spigot. But once, once the water is flowing, pumping up to 5 or 6 gallons per minute is real doable. This of course depends on how fast you pump. But again, note I'm doing here about an uh, eighth inch stroke, firm, quick, and then a quick downstroke. When you're done installing the well, you can turn the power to the well back on. Now it's possible that the water is going to be cloudy for uh, a day or so, uh, but don't let that worry you. Now here are some quick tips. If water is spitting out of the top of your uh, surge chamber here, take a shorter stroke. See, I could pull up really high and get water spitting out of that. Again, just take a little bit of a stroke. You know, a little bit of water coming out of that hole is not that big of a deal. Uh, but just short, quick strokes is what's uh, reliable. Now that water seal piston has uh, off the chart reliability. There's nothing that can really go wrong with it. But it is more efficient the faster you pump. Pumping about a stroke every one or two seconds is all that needs to get a reasonable volume uh, of delivery with a reasonable effort. Now keep in mind that the faster you pump, the better the piston is going to work. But that water seal piston does kind of leak a little bit and you can actually pump so slowly that you don't pump water. So if you're pumping really slow, people with uh, reduced physical abilities uh, you may not get as efficient of a flow as you might want. So adding the optional lever solves this problem. The lever speeds up grandma, but it will slow down an NFL linebacker. It can also facilitate pumping large amounts of water for big families. But even at a moderate pace, you're still getting quite a bit of delivery. But just keep that in mind. 
For those of you who have not purchased the pump yet and are concerned about pumping effort, the weight of the water on the T-handle is approximately 8 pounds for every 10 feet of lift. Now I add in some friction and the weight of the pump rod and it's basically 1 pound per foot. A 1 gallon milk jug weighs 8 pounds so you can simulate pumping effort with milk jugs or barbells. This pump is lifting 11 feet. So we're going to use a jug and a half, 12 pounds. Yeah, it's about the same. About a pound per foot. The optional lever can be added any time after uh, installation. And it should be considered when lifting more than 25 feet. We have a separate video for installing this as it is identical for all our other styles of pumps that go way deep and the lever is standard. Now you'll notice your spigot has three quarter inch pipe threads in there. There's a couple reasons for that. First, if you live in an area that has a lot of bugs, you can take an ordinary three quarter inch threaded plug and plug that hole and keep bugs out of your system. If you're going to fill containers that have a narrow opening like a milk jug or, or a water jug, you could put a three quarter inch tube fitting in there and you may even put a short length of a flexible tube in there and then not gluing that spigot allows you to rotate that into the narrow opening of the of the container that's often very helpful another cool feature of the AK pump is that you can configure it to look like this when it's not in use this keeps kids from playing around with it and that kind of stuff uh, it also hides it nobody really knows what this is uh, if they look at it so we make a plug at a piece of one inch pipe and a one inch cap. These fittings are a little deeper than normal, so a normal uh, plug that you find in a hardware store is not going to work. So it looks like this. When you're ready to pump water, you pull the plug, put in the spigot, spin on the T-handle, and you're in business that fast. It's a very convenient feature of the AK pump.